Hey everyone, I'm the 13th Wolfman. You know what? Today is... Today is the 29th day in the 31 days of Halloween. The 31 days of Halloween? Yeah, that's right, man. It's 31 days of Halloween, 31 movies in 31 days. We're on day 29. I've had a blast doing this. We're, we're getting really close to wrapping this whole thing up. So I thought I'd pull out an all-time favorite movie of mine. That's The Howling. Yeah, D. Wallace Stone, Christopher Stone... Meshack Taylor, Dick Miller, I mean, the list is just, Belinda, Belinda Belansky, I mean, it's, it's huge how big this is, but, this movie came out in 1980, one year before American Werewolf in London, in fact, I think this movie has a better transformation scene than American Werewolf in, Lo American Werewolf in London, I love American Werewolf in London, don't get me wrong, I like that movie, but this is between the two, this one, I think, has a better story, you know, American Werewolf in London is nothing more than a, than the reluctant werewolf movie, you know, some guy gets bit by a wolf and doesn't want to be a wolf, and oh my god, you know, this, we have a pack of werewolves, you know, it's, it's more, uh, Oh, what's animalistic, I guess, is the best way of putting it. So Dee Wallace Stone plays a TV reporter, and Christopher Stone plays her husband. Huh. Um, a segment producer, I guess is what you would call him. And at the beginning of the movie, she's supposed to meet up with this guy named Eddie. Eddie is trying to lead her into... Explain to her what, what he's been... He's known as the the slasher or no the slayer that's what it is and he wants to tell his side of the story and get it all out there in the open and let everyone know what's going on well he goes missing um, a gun goes off uh, a gun goes off he goes missing and uh, to to get her over her nervousness a person that she's worked with doc says, why don't you come out to uh, my colony, where a bunch of people, it's basically, you know, a compound, like they had in the 60s, where people of all kinds, you know, go there, live there, you know, have a good time, but there's a little secret to this compound, and that is, most of the residents are werewolves, including John Carradine, in one of his, one of his last roles, I mean, he, he's an old-timer that's an old-timer werewolf that's been, you know, he grew up when, you know, you hunted your prey, and your prey were humans, and, you know, they they, they don't do things like that, do it like that now in the movie. It's, it's a really good movie. It's directed by Joe Dante, who came out of the Corman factory, which, if you watch the movie... At the beginning of the movie, D. Wallace Stone is in a phone booth. Yes, a phone booth. They had those back in the 80s. You know, it wasn't all cell phones. But it was a, there's a pay phone, phone booth. And um, there's a guy hanging outside the phone booth. Waiting to use it or whatever. That guy that, you know, when she gets off the phone and she opens the door and she goes, Okay, you can use it now. That's Roger Corman. That's right. That's Roger Corman. That's... You know, like I said, Joe Dante comes out of the Corman factory, you know. So there's always, like, some kind of connection. This movie is so well done. I, I love the, you know, I saw this at the drive-in when, when it came out. And I'm not sure what time of the year it came out. So I was either 12 or 13 when it came out. I want to say it came out in the summertime, so I was probably 13, you know. But, um, well, when this movie came out... I saw the drive-in with my parents, my brother, the red-headed monster, and um, and I just remember the scene, the scene that has been embedded in my mind, it's been emblazed there since I was a kid, and that is the, I want to give you a piece of my mind scene. Robert Picardo plays Eddie Quist, the guy that she's supposed to talk to at the beginning of the movie. He shows up later in the movie, and he's got this this hole here, and he says to her, he says, I, I just want to give you a piece of my mind, and he reaches in, and he pulls out, you know, 
and then all of a sudden his the, the face starts bubbling up and all these all these what they call bladders you know they they were like uh, balloons they would put underneath the skin you know and they're just kind of puffing up here and puffing up there and puffing up there and then the, the snout grows you know it is a really cool transformation scene if you haven't seen the howling you must see it it's got everything going for it like I said I think it's got a better story than American Werewolf in London and I'm glad that this is See, I'm saving up some pretty cool stuff towards the end of the 31 Days of Halloween, you know. So, I'm glad that this is, you know, towards the end of it. It was something I had to make sure it was on my list. It had to be there. It had to be more towards, you know, the Hallows, the Hallowed Eve, you know. But with that, I just want you to check it out. I, I love this movie. Um, I'm the 13th Wolfman, and I'm on the prowl.